inspiration. Inspiration is actually a pretty cool thing. It can come from anywhere. You can be inspired by anything at any time, no matter what. That's really cool. That's really important, too. People want to know how to be successful and how to be happy in life. And the thing is, if you're not inspired, then you're not going to be motivated to do anything. If you're not motivated to do anything, then you'll never get anything accomplished. And if you don't accomplish anything, you can't be successful. So, the key to success is to be able to see and find inspiration and then be able to act on it. For example, take writing a song. You could be sitting on a park bench. Why you would be sitting on a park bench, I don't know. Nobody sits on park benches. Those things are disgusting. But for the example, you're sitting on a park bench. You're looking out and you see a mother pushing a little baby in one of those tiny little baby swings. And you're looking at this and that inspires you to write a song about single parents. That sounds pretty random, but you can obviously see where the connection is drawn. Little things like that is, that's how inspiration works. Stupid little things that don't make any sense. That just all kind of come together to form one big picture. With the way that America is right now, it's really hard to find good inspiration. Meaning by that, it's hard to find something to be happy about. Um, when you look on the news, you see you know, you see all the shootings, the police shootings, and if it's not that, then it's some terrorist thing, and if it's not that, then it's a school shooting, and if it's not that, well, then you're seeing more and more about how this debate is ridiculous, and how no matter who we choose, our next president is going to be awful. It's really hard to find something that's happy and so it's really hard to find just a good just it's really hard to find good happy inspiration and when you think like that you kind of put yourself into this funk of not being able to come out with anything positive positive. and so I've been kind of in that funk, and I think my last two or three videos have been relatively, I wouldn't say depressing, but they've been about more serious topics. The Black Lives Matter movement being horribly named, and of course, the What's Up America video, which was entirely about the debate and how ridiculous that is but it's really hard to find something happy today even the black li going back to the black lives matter movement which should be a happy thing you have i would say about 75% of the people in Black Lives Matter and they're very happy they're very kind people who just want to make a difference through peaceful protest but then 25% a quarter one in every four of them are angry and are mean and are cold and those are the people that walk around chanting about killing white people and that's what you're shown on TV and 
when you look up Black Lives Matter and you get to hear all these things about how awful and racist of a movement it is. It's really, really weird, this kind of point that we're in, because technically, we should be the happiest that we've ever been. We have more now than we have ever had in ways of technology and in ways of basically any and everything. I mean, we currently have self-driving cars that are commercially available. Like. That's so cool, and yet it's just an awful, sad period in time, and that sucks. So, I am going to not be brought down by all of that sadness, and I'm going to keep a very positive outlook, and I'm going to try and keep my channel very positive. Even if I am talking about a pretty heavy topic. So, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned inspiration and motivation and all that stuff. So, inspiration, I explained. Motivation, however, is a lot harder to come by. Motivation is not random. In order to be motivated, in order to motivate yourself to really do anything you have to have a clear set goal of what you want um say for instance you want youtube to be your job right because that's the thing that a lot of people want now your goal isn't to be rich your goal is to make a living so then you have to go about finding ways to achieve that goal which then starts out well you need something to make a video about and then from there you need something to do during the video you need all these different things you need to find a way to get people to see your videos you need a lot of stuff and that's where motivation comes in because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of effort and you can't just go out and do it because it's not something that you can do in an hour it's not something you can do in five minutes so when you're looking for motivation the easiest way to find it is of course To look at what you can gain so say your goal or what you're working towards is having a YouTube channel that supports you financially what you would want to do is you would want to say well if I take the time to make this video people are gonna watch it and from that I'll get money on my AdSense Money is always a pretty good motivator. Everybody gets motivated by money. Regardless of what people say, money is a good motivator. And most people are motivated by money. So, finding motivation, although slightly more difficult, is still relatively simple. Success is however very different uh, nobody can tell you that you're successful take PewDiePie right most people would consider him successful he has the number one most subscribed channel on all of YouTube right that sounds pretty successful but say his idea of success is having a channel where in the comments section it is a hundred percent positive that would mean that in his eyes he is not successful which would of course mean that he isn't successful because 
regardless of what other people tell you, success is based off of how you view your current standing. So when it comes to being successful, it's a lot simpler to just look at yourself and say, what do I think is success? And then make that your goal at the very beginning. Anyway, that's enough serious talk. Let's talk about something not serious. Um, I got not invited. I actually don't know what the proper word is. I was told to go to an audition a couple days ago. Or two weeks ago, actually. Wow, that was a while ago. Anyway, I was told to go to an audition a couple weeks ago. Um, not an acting audition, by the way. Uh, it's for some show. It's a modeling audition. And I guess I would be doing some runway show. Uh, first off, let me say... Modeling is really fun unless you're walking a runway in which case it sucks because I hate it and I hate every second of it walking a runway is the worst thing ever golly gee man I hate that it's awful <laughs> it really is it sucks you have to you have to hold like a singular look on your face that will always look good no matter when a picture is taken which means that you should be very careful about how you blink and little things like that because if somebody takes a picture at the wrong moment and you look really bad they could choose to just go with that picture and you're basically the entire time you're there you're trying to minimize how bad you could possibly look which is a lot of it's a lot of stress put on your head all at once because you're just trying to walk in a straight line but as you're walking in that straight line, you're thinking, well, is my back straight? How am I breathing? I hope I'm not breathing through my mouth. Are my eyes too wide apart? Like, stupid things. Seriously, runway, it sucks. It's just awful. But I got invited to this audition. And um, I found out that uh, what uh, I'm wearing at the audition is a uh, swimsuit so I'm wearing like you know swimming trunks which I think is really hilarious because I don't actually own a pair of swimming trunks which leads me to a story of the last pair of swimming trunks that I ever bought so I bought a pair of swimming trunks because it was summer and the swimming pool was open right sounds simple enough so I go ahead and <laughs> I buy a pair of swim trunks they fit they're nice whatever and I wear them to the pool like three times. In case you don't know, here's the thing that sucks about swim trunks. Um, they have this net on the inside for guys. And that net is meant to be like underwear, basically. Right? That's kind of what it emulates. It's basically underwear. Well, that thing sucks. And... I got home after going to the swimming pool, after, I don't know, I'd spent all day out there, like I got there at like, I think maybe 11 a.m., and I didn't leave until like 7, 6, 6 p.m., stayed out there all day, it was a good time, we were hanging out, it was a bunch of friends, we had pizza delivered, it was just a good time all around, anyway, <laughs> so... I get home and I go to take a shower and I'm not really paying attention to anything uh, and this is the first time that I've taken off my swim trunks all day and so what had happened was that the net had left little indentations on my thighs and lower body area uh, of you know the netting so there was kind of this crisscross pattern. I didn't know that. And so I was kind of red, and I didn't know that either. So I was showering and, you know, scrub-a-dub-dub, -dub, using the soap, trying to be cleanly. 
and uh, I I looked down, and for some unexplainable reason, what I see is that I have this horrible crisscrossing rash all over my lower body, which is a terrifying sight for I think anybody. Um, and it freaked me out quite a bit, not a little bit, quite a bit. Uh, and so, me being all freaked out, I may have accidentally slipped and fell. And I fell pretty hard because I went from standing to sitting in 0.0, .0 seconds. Um, so I fell down in the shower and I bumped my hip pretty bad. Uh, so for about a week I had a limp, which was awful. But <laughs> the worst part is that, you know, it made a nice loud noise. So I get out of the shower, I dry off, I go, and I'm going about my day. And my uh, stepmom, she asked me, what was that super loud noise, and if I was okay, and blah, blah, blah. And so I have to explain to my stepmom <laughs> that I was freaking out because of a rash on my lower body. And now, step-parents being, or not step-parents, but parents being parents, after hearing that, and then knowing that I had a girlfriend of, I think, four or five months, something like that, at the time, the only thing she can think of is that I was freaking out because I thought I had an STD. Which isn't true. That's not why I was freaking out. I was freaking out because there's a weird pattern all over my body. And that's just a scary thing. But. So she starts going. Oh what are you doing? You, you out here? You, you having sex? You doing? And so that turned into about a 30 minute or a 45 minute conversation. About the dangers of having unprotected sex. And so. From that day on, I never bought another pair of swim trunks, nor have I ever wore swim trunks. I only wear basketball shorts to the pool now. So that was that little story. I thought that was funny, mostly just because of how ridiculous it is and how it just kept growing. But I, I do think that it's funny that the first place that any parent's mind goes is that you're having sex. Because that just happens a lot. <laughs> anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I am sorry that the video came, I guess, what, a day late? Two days late? Something like that? It's still within the two days, or the two videos a week. So, it's fine, I guess. Anyway, guys. Uh, I do hope you enjoy. And if you did, please leave a like or a comment. And if you really, really enjoyed... And there is a subscription button. You can hit it if you want. I'm not going to force you. But, you know, that'd be cool. Okay, I want to see what happens with this rocket. Because... Does it just explode in the middle? Yeah, okay. So, I looked back over because I thought that that was another plane or something that I had hit. Anyway, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time.